Plein action, tôt, tôt. À toi, moi, je m'en vais. Bon. Brillant, tôt, tôt.
This head, the head is facing this way. seats we will then commence and I'll hand over to the church thank you very much Good evening and praise the Lord. We want to welcome you so much to this vigil. We want to thank you so much for taking off this time to be here. We are All Saints Cathedral. I'm Reverend Canon Dr. Rebecca Nyegenye, the Provost. And I've come together with my brother, Reverend Walter Aponyo. Uh, we have Reverend Canon uh, Monica Sevidega. And the rest of the team over here is from All Saints Cathedral. We bring our condolences to the family, Mama Camilla, and the rest of the family. And we pray that the Lord will comfort all of us. Let us pray. God our Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, we worship you. We come before you, Lord, as sons and daughters. Lord, we are often hurt when death happens. But we are comforted by your words because you remind us every other time in the scripture that we are like a grass, we are like a flower, we are passing away. And so, Father, we encourage thee to know that you come and take some of us and take them to glory. But some of us are still alive and it is a reminder to us that we can reorder our lives in preparations for our journey. And so, Father, today we give you thanks. For your servant Martin that you have chosen to take to glory. We thank you for his life, Lord. And as we gather together, Lord, to celebrate him, let the joy of your Holy Spirit fill our hearts. We surrender to you and dedicate this time of worship into your hands. And we pray that, Lord, every minute of this worship, may you be glorified. We give you thanks for in Jesus Christ we have prayed. Amen. I request that all of us stand. And we'll be singing, um, What a Friend We Have in Jesus. For those that have books, it is on page 31, but some of us can consult Mr. Google, and he will give us the words. Thank you so much.
Let's listen to these words of Jesus Christ. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, I am the resurrection and I am the life. He who believes in me, though he dies, yet shall he live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Friends, just a reminder to us all that we brought nothing into this world and obviously, we are taking nothing out of it. The Lord gives and the Lord takes away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Listen to what Apostle Paul told the Romans. I am sure that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor anything to come, nor height, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ our Lord. And this is true, that even at such a time as this, not even death can separate us from God's love. His love is constant through the trials, the changes, death, and life. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, in your son Jesus Christ, you have given us a true faith and a sure hope. Strengthen this faith and hope in us all our days, that we may live as those who believe in the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection to eternal life through your son Jesus Christ, our Lord. And as we are still standing, we are going to read Psalm 90. I'm reading from the New King James Version. And maybe at the end we shall join together in the Gloria. Psalm 90. It reads, Lord, you have been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains were brought forth, or ever you had formed the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. You turn man to destruction and say, Return, O children of men, for a thousand years in your sight are like yesterday when it is past, and like a watch in the night. You carry them away like a flood. They are like a sleep. In the morning, they are like grass, which grows up, and in the morning, it flourishes and grows up. In the evening, it is cut down and withers. For we have been consumed by your anger, and by your wrath we are terrified. You have set our iniquities before you, our secret sins, in the light of your countenance. For all our days have passed away in your wrath, we finish our years like a sign. The days of our lives are seventy years, 
And if by reason of strength they are eighty years. Yet their boast is only labor and sorrow. For it is soon cut off and we fly away. Who knows the power of your anger? For has the fear of you, so is your wrath. So teach us to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom. Return, O Lord. How long and have compassion on your servants? Oh, satisfy us highly with your mercy, that we may rejoice and be glad all our days. Make us glad according to the days in which you have afflicted us, the years in which we have seen evil. Let your work appear to your servants and your glory to their children. And let the beauty of the Lord our God be upon us and establish the work of our hands for us. Yes, establish the work of our hands together. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's be seated. We are going to sing meditatively this song, Abide With Me. Let's sing that song, meditatively, Abide With Me, and after that we shall have the reading of God's word. Thank you.
of Joshua chapter 24 and we read from verse 14 to 18 Joshua chapter 24 verse 14 to 18 now therefore fear the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in faithfulness Put away the gods that your fathers served beyond the river and in Egypt, and serve the Lord. And if it is evil in your eyes to serve the Lord, choose this day whom you will serve, whether the gods your fathers served in the region beyond the river or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Then the people answered, Far be it from us that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods. For it is the Lord our God who brought us and our fathers up from the land of Egypt out of the house of slavery and who did those great signs in our sight and preserved us in all the way that we went and among all the peoples through whom we passed. And the Lord, the Lord drove out before us all the people, the Amorites, who lived in the land. Therefore, we also will serve the Lord, for he is our God. The word of the Lord. Shall we arise together and we are going to sing Rock of Ages uh, before... Uh, the provost comes to share the word of the Lord, Lord with us. Help me. 
Our Father and our God, we give you thanks because you are the rock of ages. We can never hide in anyone else except in you. That Lord Jesus, even the labors of our hands can never be what you desire. But Lord Jesus, we come to you because it's only you that can save. Nothing in our hands we bring, but simply to your cross we cling. Naked, we come to you for dress. Helpless, we look to you for grace. Lord, we ask that you wash us, our Savior, or we die in sin. Lord, each one of us will reach that moment when they will say, I will draw this through this fleeting breath. When our eyes shall close in death. When we shall sow into worlds unknown. Lord, when we shall see you on that judgment throne. Rock of ages cleft for me. Let me hide my life in thee. Father, thank you. Cause us tonight that we can hide our lives in you. For in Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Let's take our seats. Brothers and sisters in Christ, we all gather here together to celebrate the life of Dr. Martin. We gather here to celebrate together with Mama Camilla and the children and the grandchildren. We gather here to celebrate someone that has lived a life and has impacted many lives. We gather here to celebrate a legacy that has been left behind. We gather here because there is something that we are learning that will never leave us. We gather here because there are words that Dr. Martin said that we shall never forget. That many years after he is gone, we will remember that he left a mark behind. And as we look at the pages of the Bible, we realize um, the psalmist in Psalm 90 saying, Lord, teach us to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom. It's very hard for us to know fathers who served the idols. But now for you, this is not your portion. What I live with you is serve the Lord, your God. This is the last, the last words. He's saying I'm leaving you in this world. But I want to know that what has kept me in this world is God. And then he wants them to make an affirmation. And he says, verse 15, And if it is evil in your eyes to serve the Lord, choose this day whom you will serve, whether the gods of your fathers served in the region beyond the river or the gods of the Amorites whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Praise the Lord. Friends, there are choices to make in this world. When Joshua was telling the children of Israel, he was not going to be with them, but he was leaving them to make a choice. Life is full of choices. And therefore, you choose to make a choice that is going to sustain you while you are in this world. For Joshua, he chose to serve the Lord together with his family. Dear friends, we have come to this home and we have all come and shared with Dr. Martin and we've shared with Mama Camilla. And for us as church, we've come here to pray. We've come here to share in communion with doctor. It can be a very short moment that you sit with him and you draw a lot of wealth from his few words that he's going to share with you. And I know that there is a lot that he has left with the family. But as for us, we know that he knew the Lord that he served the Lord. And we are here with Mama Camilla to encourage him. I know that when I met her, she said, Provost, I am firm because I am in the Lord. 
And it's only the Lord that can assure us of our firmness and our confidence. It's only the Lord that can carry us in the moments of death. It's only the Lord that can lift us when we have lost our loved ones. And so for her to say, I am firm, not in anything else, but I am firm in the Lord. I am firm not because they have left this house for me, but I am firm because I am in the Lord. Praise the Lord. And this is what Joshua is telling the children of Israel. He says, he serve the Lord in all sincerity and forget about the idolatry of your ancestors. Serve the Lord in sincerity. Many times when death happens, we look at so many things and we forget that life belongs to the Lord. As we are reading the scripture in Romans chapter 8, he was asking us a question that what is it that is going to separate us from the love of God? And he said there is nothing that can separate us from the love of the Lord. It is not about wealth. It's not about power. It's not about anything. It's not about death. It's not about sickness. And he says none of these can ever separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. Dear friends, we are all here. Today we are celebrating Martin's life. And tomorrow, it will be another person that we are going to celebrate your life. No matter how many times we move. Yesterday, um, I moved to just condole with a family that lost this young man on Enteve Road. And it was unbearable to bear the sight of how this young man passed on. It was so hurting. But friends, he left his home going to work. He did not know that he's going to encounter such a horrible death. But he passed on. The only thing that we need to think about is as I live in this world, am I serving the Lord? Because to the Lord, all of us are going to return. We have no other choice. We have no other journey. Jesus told the disciples that do not be troubled. When you read John chapter 14, let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in me. Don't let your hearts be troubled. Friends, we are going to be troubled by death, day and night. I sit at All Saints Cathedral and I get a sample just that tells me that actually people are dying. And that is when I have to book two funerals per day. And it is just a sample. They have told you that tomorrow we have a wedding. And now you can imagine the transfer. I'm going to do that wedding myself. The transfer from a funeral to a wedding. You know, it is, it's that kind of life that we live. You have to turn around and smile, but then turn around and grieve. But you have to put on all the faces. But what is it that sustains us? It is Jesus Christ. And he's the one who said, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. And no one comes to the Father except through me. Dear friends, brothers and sisters, the gospel remains the same yesterday, today, and forever. The story of the gospel never changes. But we keep reminding ourselves that actually when you die, you either go to God or you go to the devil. There are only two ways. There are only two ways. You either believe Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior or you reject him and die. Those are the only ways that we can place before us. And so Joshua is saying, he's telling them that today you are children of Israel. Make a choice. Are you going to serve the gods of your fathers? Or you are going to serve the Lord God? To serve other gods. And listen to verse 17. For it is the Lord our God who brought us and our fathers from the land of Egypt out of the house of slavery and who did not who did those great signs in our sight and preserved us all the way that we went and among all the peoples through Shua, even if we would have thought of serving someone else we will not because there is only one god that we know and this is the god who brought us out of egypt dear friends as you sit here you can identify with the children of israel which god do you want to serve 
Which God is it that gives you life? Which God is it that you know you are driving in the same lane and the other one dies and your car goes ahead? Which God is this that you reach a time when you see yourself thriving and you wonder how am I moving forward and yet another person is not moving forward? There is a God that we need to appreciate. There is a God that we need to acknowledge and this is the God of heaven. There is no other God that compares our God. Our God is the Lord of Lords. He is the King of Kings. He is everything to us. He is the Lord that has given Dr. Martin Alike all these years to live in this world. Praise the Lord. He is the Lord who gave him a family. He is the Lord that sustains the children now. He is the God that sustains Mama Camilla now. He is the Lord that has put a smile on their faces even when they are mourning their loved one. He is the Lord. And so friends, we want to invite you to this God tonight. To know that there is no other God. The children of Israel recounted. I want you to recount your life and look back. If it was in your own effort... I do not know whether you be living right now, but you are living because God lives. And because he lives, we can face tomorrow. Hallelujah. And so Joshua told the children of Israel, and the children of Israel confessed and said, we are going to serve the Lord. And as you continue with that scripture, Joshua tells them, you are witnesses of these things today. Dear friends, brothers and sisters, we are witnesses of what men and women of God leave behind. We are witnesses. As I was hearing on television, on any TV, the day that Dr. Paston, someone said, you know this funeral is unusual because we want to carry on a legacy. We are not going to speak the way we have been speaking. The legacy of time, praise the Lord. Yes, the legacy of time. And I thought I wish we could do that every other day other than having speeches all over and all over and all over. And you know, you came from office, you want to run back to office and then you come and you get speeches repeated. One repeats the same thing, another one repeats the same thing, another one says I also want a microphone. How much I pray that we can take up the legacy of time management. Praise the Lord. Time. Time. You know, Africans, we have a lot of time and yet we don't have it. We have the same clock, but we waste a lot of time. <laughs> we do the unnecessary. May God help us that if you pick nothing today, pick the legacy of time. Let's manage our time. Let's manage our lives. And you know, when you are a person of your word, what you say happens. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so we want to pray that as we share in the testimonies, as we share in the life of Dr. Martin, as we remember him, the Lord will give us something to hold on to. Time is God's asset. Time is not ours. It's the Lord who makes time and it is the Lord who helps us. And that is why he reminds us that Lord teaches us how to number our days. Number our days. It's about time. Number our days. And you know, when you read that Psalm, um, Psalm 90, there, is, uh, there are certain years that are mentioned in Psalm 90. And so he, he tells us that, um, I don't know, there's, there's that space of the, the yes, verse Yes, verse, verse 10. He says the years of our life are 70. Or even by reason of strength, 80. Yet their span is but toil and trouble. They are soon gone and we fly away. Who considers the power of your anger? You know, friends, we reach 80, we reach 70. The Lord has given us time. And even when we reach that time, we are still grabbing things left and right. We are not helped. The Lord, the Lord is not helping us to number our days. We are still so wild. And yet we are 70. And you know you are now in bonus. <laughs> if I asked those who are here in bonus, I don't know how many will put up their hands. Some of us are approaching the bonus time. You are in a bonus. All that you need is to serve the Lord and prepare for heaven. 
That is all that you need to do. You need to identify with Joshua as he says, for me and my family we will serve the Lord. Because the Lord has given us bonus. But you get to the bedside of someone, they are 90, and you are asking them to accept Jesus, and they are saying, wait a minute. You are in a bonus. What are you waiting for? You have no time. The Lord has given you that space that you can be able to appreciate him as your Lord and personal Savior. Friends, the same question I want to ask. As for me and my house will serve the Lord, whom do you serve? I want to pray that we'll serve the Lord in faithfulness and sincerity. Let's be sincere. Dear friends, brothers and sisters, we can never leave a legacy unless if we serve the Lord with everything that we are and love him and serve God in sincerity and faithfulness. This world will be a better world for all of us to live in. We need to seek the Lord. We need to hear the voice of the Lord. We need to trust the Lord. We need to bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Our God is able. The Lord desires that each one of us knows him personally. The Lord desires that you commit yourself for the time you've been given in this world that you can be able to serve the Lord. That's the only gift that you can give back to the Lord. The Bible says that in this world we brought nothing and we'll go back with Nothing. You know, friends, the interesting thing is that the funeral services will ask you for a new dress, not the old one you loved. You get it. You carry it and you take it there and everything is left and you take nothing. And the scripture comes true that you brought nothing and you'll take back nothing. All you need to take back is Jesus. Praise the Lord. That's the only treasure you have. Because the only place you're going now to celebrate forever is heaven. And because you're going to heaven, you cannot enter there without Jesus Christ. He's the only passport for you to enter eternal life. I invite us, friends, to think about the life that our God has given us. We are like a flower. Today we flourish, we blossom. Tomorrow we are dry. And when you dry up, where do you go? Who do I have in heaven except you? That is Jesus. Hallelujah. Let us pray. While I do this splitting breath, when my eyes shall close in death, when I soar towards unknown, see the God and our Father, the Rock of Ages. Before we bow. You. you are the King of Kings. You are the Lion of Judah. Father, in a situation like this, in which we stand, that one of us has left us, O oh God, and yet you have given us the encouragement that he is in glory. Father, we pray that you strengthen each one of us to know that our life is too short. Lord, help us to know that you hold our lives into your hands. That, Lord, we have no power of our lives, but the only power we have is in you. My Father and my God, I pray that as we hear these words, O oh Lord, as we listen to what you are giving us as a legacy through Dr. Martin, Lord, we know that one of the things he treasured was time. Teach us, Lord, to number the days that you have given us that we can live with a heart of wisdom. Lord, we surrender to you this evening. We give you each and every detail of this evening, Lord. Father, we open our hearts and our minds to you. We call on you, Abba, Father. You are the holy God. And Father, just as Joshua told the children of Israel to serve the Lord in faithfulness and sincerity, it is my prayer that, Lord, you will be sincere in your service to you. The Lord will not have divided attention when we draw to you. Father, that we will learn lessons that as our friends go, we are also steadily waiting to depart. We do not know how we will go, but one thing we know that, Lord, we will go. And so give us grace to wait on you and to know that you are the Lord. 
We <laughs> give you thanks, Lord. We worship you. We honor you. Draw us to yourself. As we hear the testimonies of God, Father, we pray that these testimonies will bring a lot of encouragement to all of us. As we plan to be in the church tomorrow, Lord, we are trusting you that even in the church, Lord, you'll speak to us. You'll directly address our hearts because all we desire right now is that our hearts will be edified to know you and to love you and to trust you and to draw closer to you. Lord, I pray for the family. I pray for Mama Camilla. I pray that, Lord, you'll give her the grace she needs. Give the children the grace they need. Give the grandchildren the grace that they need. And, Father, above all, give them the steady fast heart to know that they will continue to serve you in sincerity and faithfulness just as their father did. We give you thanks, Lord. Watch over us this evening, Lord. And bless every speech that is going to happen here. And bless our hearts as we continue to serve you. For in Jesus Christ we have prayed. Amen. Amen. May God bless you. We are going to have a song as we transition to hand over to the MC to take us through the speeches. Oh Lord, my God, so many awesome wonder. We can start and switch a bit before we sit. Oh Lord, my God, And uh, the, the clergy, together with the choir, we really appreciate your message of encouragement this evening. 
My name is Francis Gimara. Together with uh, Mr. David Panga, we will uh, manage the program this evening. It is a big honor for both of us to do this for our distinguished departed Dr. Martin Alike. Uh, let me welcome all of you this evening for joining the family. Uh, the Bible encourages us to mourn with those who are mourning and that for us is very important. We really appreciate each one of you in your various capacities. Let me start by saying we will have speeches this evening and we, the family, Mama Alike has uh, graciously allowed people who want to pay tribute this evening Time will be very well managed, and we have to respect this because these are the wishes of the family. So tomorrow there will be very few speeches. There will not be a change on the program. We will manage it as the director. But today there will be some latitude because we want to celebrate Dr. Like. We will uh, be encouraged by testimonies from very many places. As you all know, many of dedicated. So how we will start this evening, let me invite our mama to start us off, to welcome you, and as well say one or two things. Uh, mama Camille, we will ask you to start us off this evening. Yeah. You, you please sit. Praise the Lord. Oh, he is there. He has been with me. He has brought me this far, and he will take me on further. First of all, thank all of you <coughs> for coming this evening to share this with us. Some of my family has not yet arrived. They will be arriving tomorrow. Uh, but at the moment, I have got uh, Philip on my far right, who lives and works in London. And next to me, I have my Dr. Okello. And on my left, I have Dear Judy Auma, our firstborn. I have apologies for the other son, Martin Jr., who unfortunately is not well at the moment and was unable to travel. And so he sends greetings to us and to all of you. Um, it's very fitting, the provost, your s part in the sermon about timekeeping. I have some things to say about that later on. But um, I want to tell you something about our lives. Next month, on the 30th of May, we would have been celebrating 65 years of marriage. Now, that's no easy thing, is it? But, and all of you there who are newly married, oldly married, and in between, trust in the Lord and you will get there. You may not get to 65, but wherever you get, he will help you to get there and make your life something very special. I met my husband, or we met each other through a mutual friend, and he says, if you've read uh, The Bell is Ringing, that it was love at first sight. I was at church one Sunday, and since uh, Martin's felt fa uh, health had started failing, I switched from my beloved 7.30 service to half past 11. And on that particular day, 
the preacher said, those of you who believe in love at first sight, no, it, it doesn't work. Well, behind my prayers in my eyes, I was smirking because if you have the right company, it works. So here we are. Uh, <clears throat> we were married in London at St. John's Church at Hempstead by Reverend Fred Wellborn. Now, those of you who are old enough like me will remember Fred and his wife Hebe. Fred was the chaplain at McCarrity, well, I guess the 40s and 50s, and his wife Hebe was a doctor who was doing health work, and so he married us at St. John's, St. John's Church at Hempstead. Um, we returned to Uganda where he started working for the government, then the colonial government, and he was posted to Malago, and he came back and he said, you know, these Britishers, they know nothing about dentistry. I am very frustrated. Anyway, his frustration must have become apparent because they moved him to the then so-called European hospital. But unfortunately, at that hospital, he could not treat his countrymen. He could only treat the European civil servants, which did not please him at all. And I remember when I became pregnant with my daughter, Julie, the professor of obstetrics and gynecology at McCarrity, who I was, was looking after me, said, Dr. Alika, where is your wife going to deliver? And my husband said, where is she going to deliver? Why here, of course. She said, oh, but I must remind you, this is, uh, this is a, a European hospital. So my husband reared up and said, it just so happens that I know this. I treat the European patients, but my wife is going to deliver in this hospital. You will see. And of course, Julie was delivered at Nakasero Hospital. Not the one there today, but the one where that hotel has gone up. We, we uh, had then subsequently twins. And then, you know, in Acholi, the one who follows anything special is Okello. So here is my Okello. Born in <laughs> By that time, the new Malago had been established. Yes, yeah. Now, uh, Provost, I want to make a comment about you were speaking about Martin and timekeeping. I arrived in Uganda in August of 1959. And in November of 1959, I attended a dinner uh, on the then lovely Kabaka and Jagala. And it was in the home of Mr. and Mrs. Kita Mirike. And I am sitting there, and uh, the father of Sara Kisasankoli, who's the mother to, to the current Kabaka, father came to me and he said, well, my wife Pumala wants to take you to meet someone. So Pumala came and took me to meet someone and it was His Highness the Kabaka. That was in November of 1959. In December around Christmas time, he invited us for dinner at Bamunanika. And as you know, he was a great friend of Martin's elder brother, Dowdy Cheng. So Dowdy was also going to be there. Well, I am a new bride, but I must look lovely for his highness. So I was primping and preparing to go. Time was moving on. When I came out of the bedroom to present myself to my husband to go, there was no vehicle. <laughs> he had gone. <laughs> yeah. 
and he had left me. I was so distressed, I didn't know what to do. But when he reached Bamunanika, His Highness said, where's Camilla? He said, oh, 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 oh. Uh, I, well, she delayed, so I came in. Oh. He got one of his vehicles with a chauffeur, and that chauffeur drove all the way from Bamunanika to Kololo to pick me and take me back for dinner. <laughs> but, it taught me the lesson of my lifetime about his timekeeping, <laughs> and I never forgot that. My husband was a very serious person, but also underneath that seriousness, there was jollity. He was a very jolly person, and he was a great joker. Um, and I realized this after he started playing golf and the golfers would come and tell me, he said, oh, Martin has told us a great joke, a great joke, great joke. But Martin was the epitome of a gentleman. Yes. And our lives were just wonderful. Um... He was loving, he was considerate, yes. he was very romantic. Yes. <laughs> and he was a wonderful father yes. and a wonderful husband and he provided for us in every way possible. Yes. And this was very apparent when we had to run into exile and he had no job, he had to run away and we took a little bag of, for each of the children but the Lord was there and I remember on Christmas of 1972 we had finally moved into our own house and we had a prayer First of all, my son, Philip, on the far right said, Mommy, I see now we can afford some gifts because Martin had bought a few gifts. But he said, you know, Mommy, I really don't want any of these things, really. I just want you and Daddy. And we sat down to that meal, and the family prayed. And the theme of that prayer was, Lord, we have come this far together and give us a second chance. And my husband, with the Lord's guidance, got that second chance and became a very successful person in business and also in his dental work. Now, moving on very quickly, and please forgive me because I, I would like you all to know this man deeply because some of you knew him in certain aspects. But I want you to get a, leave here with a picture of this wonderful man in all aspects. So um, we moved on. We stayed in Nairobi. And my children attended a school called St. Andrew's Turi, which is a Christian co-educational uh, boarding school in Turi, Kenya. Now, this is another example of another aspect of Martin. We picked the children up from Turi. First of all, I want to say, when my children traveled from Turi, the first thing they opened when we would go on weekends in their little bags was the Bible. And this impressed me so much, I didn't ask them to bring it, but that's the way they were brought up and that's what they wanted. On this particular journey, uh, a, Mr. a professor, Richard Musanji, who had been at uh, Cabagnolo and married a very good friend of ours from here, had bought a club in the Highlands at Kitali called the Soy Club, which had previously been a European club. And I s called him and I said, Richard, uh, we would like to go up to the Soy Club. And he said, all right, I'll arrange everything. 
So he, I don't know what he told the club. Anyway, I, we collected the children from Turi and we drove and drove and drove and drove and we arrived at, at Gitali Club and my husband was sweaty and tired and everything. We got out of the car and I entered, he, and he said to me, Camille, you go and do the arrangement, see what we have. So I went in, oh, Madame Alika, you're so welcome. Thank you very much for coming. These children jumped out of the car and went running around because they had horses there and they were very happy. So he said, oh, I have a wonderful, we have a wonderful cottage for you with a fireplace, everything is ready. And I said, thank you very much. Then they started moving around behind the reception desk. And they weren't doing anything. And I said, is the room ready? They said, yes. But then he whispered, he leaned over, he said, but Mrs. Ali K, uh, your professor didn't tell me you were bringing your driver. <laughs> we have to make arrangements for him. And, and, and where, 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 where is he going to sleep? And Martin Alaker, oh, I said, oh, no, 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 don't worry, he'll sleep with me. <laughs> the staff disappeared. <laughs> and then they recovered and came back, and just as they were recovering, these children came in. Oh, daddy, 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 we've seen horses. And these people were so <laughs> relieved. <laughs> But that was Martin, and he winked at me because he said, all right, I'll fix these people. So anyway, that was my husband. And, and he was just like that, but he could be very serious when he wanted to be very serious. Um, a man of integrity. A man of, I don't know if honesty is also the same as integrity, but he was that kind of a person. Everything he did was according to the book. He lived a life of modesty in terms of how he lived and what he really had. But he had another love beside me, golf. So that I had to share my time with him. Now, let me <coughs> talk a little about the, the church aspect. As you all know, my husband is an old Budonian, and you know how many times you go to chapel at Budo. And so when we came back, uh, I first went to Nimirembe, and then I realized it was too far to go, so I moved to All Saints. And actually, I had become a member of All Saints, who did in 1960. And um, he was, uh, now you see my mind is gone. Um, okay. What was I talking about? All Saints. Oh, and his sister said to me one Sunday, after I came to All Saints, why don't you make that brother of mine get up and come to church with you? Because she and her husband were always there punctually at half past oh, yeah. seven. So I said, Janet, no, it doesn't work like that. One day, Saturday night, he came and he said, you know, I think I'm going to go to church with you tomorrow. And I said, fine. Uh, I don't think I had become an assistant warden by that time, maybe so, but anyway, I was there all the, all the Sunday all the time. So he went, came to church with me, and the sermon that day was by Professor Kawa. I don't know if any of you know him, who was a professor of physics at McCarrie, an excellent, excellent preacher. We got in the car, and he said, oh, I enjoyed that. So I said, very good. We came back, he changed his clothes, went for golf. Two Sundays, three Sundays later, he said, oh, uh, 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 I think I'll come back with you uh, tomorrow. I said, oh, fine, fine. Sunday said to the host, oh, we have to leave early because we have to be at church tomorrow morning. 
And from that time on, my husband would wake me up at 6 o'clock so we could get ourselves ready and get to church. And I remember one Sunday, there was a questionnaire, and the questionnaire said, those of you who are saved and your husband is not, sign your name. I don't, this is long before your time, Provost and Monica, I think also before your time. So I said, now how can I do this? You know, and I just refused. But it eventually came, and it came on his own, and I didn't have to push my husband to go to church or to believe the word. He did it on his own. Um, in closing, all of you know how precious he was to me. And he brought me to this country, young, supposedly knowledgeable, because I had also just finished university and I had gone, was going for a master's degree. And he brought me to a country, first of all, a beauty. Secondly, a country that has the most wonderful people on earth that I have ever met. <laughs> I think I'm more Ugandan than they are to my husband now, <laughs> but it's just, it was, it's, life was a fantastic experience, ever moving, ever changing, because of Martin Alika. And a lot of me is there. Most of me is still here. He also loved his country. Yes. And it was a pleasure for him to do the work for Uganda that he was asked to do. So my feelings are very mixed, but it is a feeling that is difficult to explain because not only was I introduced to a new life, a new family, and a new culture. And his family is unbelievable. His father took me under his wing. His father loved me very much. And I remember when he was celebrating uh, 50 years of confirmation, he came and he said, you're taking me to the church, you're going to do to cook for, you know. He was, the celebration was done by um, the late Archbishop Janani Luum. And the other day, someone sent me on WhatsApp, I now have a smartphone and I'm very happy. <laughs> <laughs> they sent me on WhatsApp a board from the church KO. And it is those that are ba first baptismal people in that area. The first one is Musa Ali in 1903. And as you scroll down, you see Lassiter Okech, 1913. Musa Ali at the top, 1903, is the father of Martin's mother. Musa Ali was Martin's grandfather. Scrolling down, you have Lassiter Okech, 1913, who is, was Martin's father. And that's a very historical document. And while I remain in Gulu this time, I am going to that church and see what it is. Very meaningful. So, fellow mourners, I thank you for coming. And one thing I forgot to expound on the family in that they taught me and assisted me with 
the culture. And he invited 30 old Budonians and their wives. And as sir, soon as Sir Walter Coots left, there was no English. <laughs> and I am in my house, and they could have been saying, this mom has cooked bad food, that whatever, whatever. And I said, no, I'm going to go <laughs> and learn look at So I went and f I found a tutor at McCarity called Mr. Kamoka. I don't know where he is now. But I'm ever grateful. And I had three guides to help me because I would leave class and I would go and speak Luganda, making big mistakes, but anyway, it helped me. Those three people, three people, the first one was Miria Kalule, uh, Solome Sentong, Solo, she was Solome Kayanja then, and Joyce Impanga. And Joyce had a flat at uh, one of the flats at McCary, so I would leave class and I, then I would go and we'd have lunch there and so on and so forth. So there's a lot of things in, that have happened in my life. Um, and this Dr. Martin Alica has guided me and helped me through my life here. And the Lasseter O'Cage family, if you have a choose a family, there's no. <laughs> choose that. I mean, they were absolutely marvelous. They never said anything about my coming there into the family. They immediately, when he told them he wanted to marry me, his mother said, well, if you have found someone that you can spend the rest of your life with, we will accept her. So I was accepted on that, that way. And I would just like my sister-in-law Naomi to stand because she was my guide and all through life even up to today uh, Naomi has been with me and she takes many spaces in my heart and in my life and I just want to say thank you to her and to the family so, Martin Alica, you will ever be with me until we meet again. May your soul rest in peace. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mama, for that very, very excellent speech. We thank you for being a very strong pillar in the life of Dr. Martin Alike. A round of applause for Mama. God bless you. Keep you strong. We will move on. The children agreed one of them will make a speech tomorrow. But tonight, this is an evening of testimony. This is an evening of celebration. So those who want to speak, we will allow them to speak. Dave, uh, Julie wants to speak. Then next, uh, Dr. Kello and Philip. And then we will hear from the granddaughter. And then Auntie. Auntie Naomi will speak. And then we will now move from the family. It's an evening to celebrate Dr. Martin Alike distinguished Ugandan who has run a good race. Julie, have the microphone and testify about your dad. Good evening, my name is uh, Julie Anna Umalike. I'm the firstborn of Dr. Martin Alike and Mrs. Camille Alike. And first of all, I want to thank all of you for coming today. I am actually overwhelmed by the number of people. And I'm truly honored that you could come here tonight to celebrate my father's life. I just wanted to be very brief in what I shared, that my father was a man of integrity, a man of love, a man of compassion, a man of emotion, a man of passion. 
but most of all, he was a man of love. A man who loved his wife, who loved his children, who loved his grandchildren. He loved golf, and he loved Uganda. Because of my father and who he was, I told him this at the hospital. I said, Daddy, because of you, I am still single. Because I cannot find a man that has the same standards that you have. And that is a huge testimony. So thank you very much all for coming here tonight. We are very grateful and appreciative. Thank you, Julie. I'll ask Dr. Alike to speak. Okay. Um, ladies and gentlemen, all protocols are observed. Uh, I'm the non-lawyer in the family and the group, so my, my words will be brief. Um, I distinctly remember as a young child um, getting into a debate with someone about who the strongest man in the world was, and I looked at this other person and I, thought to, I looked at them and I said, of course it's my father. Um, I think to every boy, uh, every child, every boy especially, your father is the strongest person in the world. But what I remember precipitated and held that memory uh, in my mind for a very long time, probably longer than it should have, is uh, in 1971, we were uh, immediate neighbors with uh, General Amin on the night of the coup. And uh, we were awoken at night by the sound of a very large uh, caliber weapon, artillery being sent off, followed by a uh, small arms fire. and. Uh, I have this image in my mind of my father coming in, crawling on his arms. General, what do they call that? <laughs> so he craw crawling, yeah. So he he grabbed us in a, off our beds in our bedding and pulled us onto the floor, where we'd be below the window, where um, the small arms fire that they were scattering around us would not be uh, would not harm us, and we slept. Um, so that's the memory of my. Uh, of my father. Now, um, being the son of a rot is 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 an accident of birth. Uh, it does not take any personal accomplishment to to be born. That it doesn't entitle you to anything special. You have to earn the respect of others. Um, he jokingly used to say that the only thing he could do within his powers was to summon the Bola dancers. Beyond that, there really wasn't anything could do. <laughs> it would have been easy for him to uh, assume uh, a, a level of arrogance, being the son of a chief and having a brother who is a national hero, um, and ending up believing the hype of those surrounding you. Martin Alike worked hard to turn opportunities into success, to go from Gulu to Budo to the US, uh, even the misfortune of being exiled was an unexpected opportunity to, for him to turn de despair into personal success. Despite landing in Nairobi penniless in 72, uh, dad was so driven to provide for his family, as my mother and sister have attested, that he did whatever he could to build us the perfect life in a matter of a couple of years. And with the level of success that he enjoyed there, um, it would be easy for him to have been comfortable and stayed there. However, his other love, the love for his country, is what drove him back here to do what he could for whom he could. He was very involved with some of the uh, liberation movements uh, post-1971, and um, he also was involved in whatever way he could, as long as it didn't threaten his family. He would do what he did, what he could do with whomever, as long as they didn't compromise his integrity, as I said, also his, his, his family's safety. So having said that, without being political, all of those who've contributed to getting our country back to where it is post-1971, I thank you because dad had one wish. He wanted to live out his life in Uganda, which he was able to do. Now, dad's favorite poem was um, If, and I promise I will not read the whole poem, that, but there is a, a line uh, in the poem that says, uh, if you can walk with crowds, keep your virtue, or walk with kings, nor lose the common touch. If neither, for, neither foes nor loving friends can hurt you, if all men can count with you, but none too much, 
if you can fill the unforgiving minute with 60 seconds worth of distance run, yours is the earth and everything that's in it, and, which is more, you will be a man, my son. And that was his favorite poem. Um, the reason why it resonates with me is because uh, he would read the newspaper and there would be a line about a person, let's say, getting hit by a car and it, or, or dying, and his fear was that he would end up as three lines in the newspaper. A man was hit by a car. A man died. This man here, my father, was a great man. He was such a great man to me. He was the perfect template to me because I ended up following him in his profession. <laughs> and uh, I also uh, try and emulate his example as being uh, a good father. Um, I am very involved with my children and I try to be very, very dem demonstrative with them. Uh, this is the same man who was so at ease with everybody. He could dine with the queen, which he did uh, at Chogham, and he could also sleep in uh, a hut of a farmer somewhere. I remember in one of the political activities he was involved with, I think this was uh, immediately after the liberation in 1979, uh, he was coming from Gulu and was involved in an accident in the middle of nowhere. The car rolled and uh, some farmers took him in and he stayed with them. And what was memorable is that we all went as a family to Gulu after that and I remember stopping off at that farm and taking some gifts to those people and just thanking them. So this is a man who could be with anyone uh, across the spectrum. Um, it is an honor and a privilege being his son and I'm so grateful that for the life that he lived. And we thank you all for coming here and celebrating with us. Um, his love for his country was only superseded by his love for family and friends. Yeah. And just looking out here and being amongst friends to celebrate with us, celebrate his life, uh, and give him the, the, such a warm send off is very, very heartwarming. So thank you all for coming. And uh, we will continue this process uh, of celebration with you. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Kelo. I'm inviting Camille Alike to speak on behalf of the grandchildren. Hello, uh, my name is Dr. Again, Camille and Atim Alike. Um, I'm the eldest of the seven grandchildren that Dr. Martin Drum Oketch and Camille share. Just here. Um, we're here to celebrate, to celebrate the life of my grandfather and I really do think that it's a celebration because whilst we miss him very terribly, <laughs> as someone said a few days ago, at 95 we cannot blame the good Lord for calling him home. Yep. Quara, as we call him, the Acholi for grandfather, was an inspiration to all of his grandchildren. He was warm, kind-hearted and quick to laugh. He was highly intelligent, quick-witted and he gave us the warmest of hugs. He also has very fond memories of sitting upstairs after dinner with him, drink and cigar in hand, telling us his memories of his childhood and about his time in Gulu and Atoliland and Uganda. He had a wealth of experience, and I'm sure all of us only scratched the very surface of what he had to offer us. Having been named for the strong woman who stood beside Quara for the most of his life, you can also imagine the confusion that happens when I visit. Someone will still say, Camille, and he would go, junior or senior? Someone would call Dr. Alika, and for the past eight years again, someone would say, junior or senior? <laughs> Last year, my mother asked me what to make, was a defining moment that made me want to become a doctor. And I really think on reflection that this is down to Quara. I would not be Dr. Alika without him. Quara loved his family, and he loved Uganda, as everybody else has attested to. He was passionate about making Uganda better, and also quietly selfless in seeking out the opportunities to help others within his community. And I think the number of people whose lives he's touched is evident in the number of people who are here today. Yeah. On behalf of his grandchildren, myself, Juliet Amuna, Dowdy Temajo, Robin Awilo, Benjamin Okema, Lucia Pio, and Eloisa Chen, we all want to thank you for the touching sentiments that you have expressed about our grandfather and towards our family. Quara is a man that we are extremely proud to call our own, and we hope to live up to the legacy and make him proud. Quara, we love you lots and we'll miss you. Thank you so much. 
uh, earlier on, uh, she said she'll speak for five minutes. She took about 30 minutes to prepare for that speech. You can see that uh, the, the, the legacy of excellence is now moving to grandchildren. Thank you, thank you, Camille. Thank you for speaking to us. <laughs> Auntie Naomi, I'm going to invite you to come and speak. And then we will, uh, Philip says he will speak tomorrow or later on. But for now, let Auntie Naomi address the evening, celebrate. Provost and members of the clergy and all you members of my family for tonight and forever. I am not sure if my sister-in-law forgot something tonight. I heard her saying she had four children. I don't think it's true. She actually had five children. And yours truly was the firstborn. <laughs> now, let me tell you a true story before I move on. When my brother started coming back just to check you know, how things were before they relocated here. Somebody asked a friend of mine, said, who is Dr. Alika? And the person said, he is the brother to Naomi Wanyama. And the person retorted, said, but how come Mrs. Wanyama is not beautiful <laughs> as Dr. Alika is handsome? When I was told that story, we had a good laugh. Because in any case, it was true <laughs> that my brother took up to my, after my mother and her beauty was given to him and not to me. And since people don't look at details, they don't really know that uh, we were related. That also was very good because when they had to run away to Nairobi, some of us remain, remained behind. And there were times when people would say to me, but you are coming from up there. You must be knowing Dr. Elika. And I was doing what Peter did to Jesus. <laughs> simumanyi, simumanyi, simumanyi. <laughs> so anyway, that is as far as that story goes. Now, my memory of my brother goes very far. First of all, let me, cook, let, me let you know the follow-up of how Julina and Lasto Cage had 10 children. They had Dawido Cheng. They had Janet Odonga. Then they had Alike. Then they had, in between, Jerida Awilo Oloya. Then they had Professor Okot Buamoy. Then they had Lucy Apio and Anna Achen as twins. Then they had Okelo Akim. And then they had Naomi Adam. And then they had Okema Michael. So, number three and number nine. So I'm number nine out of ten. He always regaled people in, meeting, in our gathering here that when him and the late Dawido Chen were in Budo, 
our father wrote a letter, thinking he's writing a very nice letter to his children, and said, your mother has had a baby girl. And Martin said, I consider that the worst news. Because now, again, another child. But I always told him that it was because the beautiful one had not yet been born. <laughs> so what I'm going to talk to you about, Martin, is what I now know as number nine. Not as number four, five, six. Now, I am saying these things on behalf of my remaining siblings. I have Lucy Peel in Arizona. I have Ada Chen in Gulu. And I have Okelo in the UK and myself. I also speak on behalf of the larger Okej family and our clan, the Temajo people, some of them are here. So I'll just make this tribute so that we know that we have to carry on what Alike did. My first memory of Alike was money he posted. He worked as a student and got some money. And those days, there was no theft. There was nothing. Money came through the post office. And came to me as a young child in primary school. And in that letter, he said, give some of this money to Okema, because Okema number 10. But tell him not to use all of that money to eat mandazi. <laughs> That was that. Then the next time, because he took so long in America, I think for us we thought it was seven years, he came and we all received him in Guru. And from there then we had, we had, not only had, but he gave our mother a beautiful photograph of a nice girl that he had met. So my mother kept that photograph. So one day, she just wanted to test, maybe, test me. She said, uh, Adon, if I sent you to steal somebody's vegetable and you were caught, whom would you say sent you? Then I told her, I would say, I came in the garden myself. Nobody sent me. She said, okay, you sit down now. She went into her bedroom and brought me the beautiful photograph of Camille Agnes Moore. So that is the first time I saw. Then once they came here, they took me on as really their daughter from the junior school, senior, Macquarie University, until unfortunately they had to run away to Kenya. But before that, both of them, I can't talk about Martin and leave out Camille. They taught me how to hold a fork, how to hold a knife, how to talk to guests. You know, those life skills I learned from them. My brother taught me how to iron shirts. He shut, and I became an expert on that. 
my brother's kindness and by extension that of the wife when it came to supporting other people, other bright students in Uganda. It is not mentioned anywhere in his book or anywhere that he boasts about. I know it personally. I know some of the people. The only problem I had with this scholarship was that it was only for those studying science. They started promoting science. So that was the only problem I had with that. But otherwise, they have been very, very generous people. Let's go back home to Awaranga. Alike loved his father. Alike loved his, all his extended brothers and sisters. His mother. Yes. To the extent that, and some of my relatives are here, they will say whether I am telling lies or not. In almost every home, there is either a Martin Alike or a Martin or an Alike. Why would you do that if you don't love somebody? They loved him. We all loved him. Personally, with Alike, he treated me as his echo. He confided in me because he knew I won't take it beyond our two. When he was appointed a minister, he was very fond of calling me for, he used to say, a date. I want to have a date with you. Uh, let's go to the Sheraton. And at one time, when we were eating, he said, now look, Naomi, I want you to tell me, what are the do and the don'ts of a minister? I told him, I will only tell you the don'ts <laughs> because at that time I was under secretary in the Ministry of Finance. I said, never go near the till on a Friday because you have no constituency except us. The other ministers can have excuses to get money, but not you. Number two. Be careful how you use government vehicle. It is only for official use. So he hid, he did that advice. Alike wanted Uganda to be peaceful. He told me at the time when there was some bit, little bit of problem in 2001. He said, Naomi, I'm not going back to exile. I was treated very, very well by the president and the people of Kenya. But I always had that mark on my heart saying refugee so now that i'm here i am not going any place that he told me and i knew he meant it so for tonight let me tell you that that is the legacy i remember of my brother he said if you want to have true friends, let me tell you, Naomi, to have true friends, bring them to your home. Give them drinks in your home. Give them food in your home. Hotel is good, but the home is where the heart is. 
I know Martin has so, so many friends. I have met some, I have not met others. When he fell sick, I would come here, I would find all different friends. If not, I would be told of so and so has been here, so and so has called, and I felt very, very, very happy with all of you. You, the friends. We would not have been able to keep Martin happy. We are few, we are far. You've been with him, playing golf, doing business, just having other good time in the church and other places. Let me end with just one. Camille, I've already said it before. Camille is American born, but Camille is an Acholi. You talk about any food in Acholi now. Oh, she will rattle. Oh, we, we must have this bo, marakwang, layata. All that must be on her menu if she's organizing something up there. My mother enjoyed her company so, so, so much. She was the first to introduce our mother to eating cake. Break that rule for my mother by baking her this beautiful cake and taking it and walking in a humble way, a little in a humble way, like our father. And God blessed them because they were able to give our father a decent coffin at a very hard time when most people were just buried bare ground. They were able to provide our mother a beautiful coffin. That, to me, is something that is, be, is, is beyond what we can do. So, Camille, children, thank you very much for being there for us. Camille, thank you very much for looking after my brother. He never complained about you. I would say, Kopango, ah, kop okwe. Then I said, you know, our jolly way of greeting is actually not good because even when somebody is sick, you still say, how are you? How are things? But we have no other way of greeting. So he died very brave. Extremely, extremely a brave man. I was really happy that he went the way he went. We all felt he was suffering, although he was not telling us. But once somebody stops talking, you know the communication has gone. Camille, thank you so much. I love you. I'll never forget you. You are my mother. You are my mother. Thank you so much, Auntie Naomi, for representing the siblings this evening. Uh, friends, uh, we will move on. The family has been very gracious. Uh, Martin came from the Acholi community. Mama Camille resolves that flowers should not be brought. Instead, uh, Dr. Like was very much associated with Acholi. Many people are named after him. Many professionals look up to him. And he has been a shining star that, you know, from Acholi, something beautiful can come. He came and served Uganda with distinction. So, Honorable, you, you're welcome to make a few remarks. 
And then uh, thereafter, we will ask Honorable Katumba Wamala. This is a, a state funeral. He will speak again very briefly. It is a, a state funeral. He will speak again very briefly on behalf of the government and the ministers. And then we will take it back to the church. Well, well, well. <clears throat> this is an, an occasion, a difficult one. Mego Camille, thank you for your strength and courage and support you gave Martin. <clears throat> With your children, I can see God has kept you strong, and we are very grateful for that. Well, <coughs> Muse Martin Alike was a pillar in our community. <coughs> he was a pillar in a Chile community, and we all loved him. Muse Martin Alike was a leader. A leader who always gave courage to the younger generations. He gave all the support necessary. I must say, I'm one of those who have benefited a lot from his guidance. Whenever I'm facing a crossroad, I always rang him. And we met and we discussed and I listened to his experience, it helped me wherever I worked in government as a minister. Well, this is not a surprise because uh, Martin Alike hailed from the family of Lasito Cage. That family showed the light to the people of Acholi with respect to education. Our people were not really anxious to send children for education. At the time, people preferred children to send children to look after cattle, look after goats, and look after the home and not go to school. But last Cage ensured that his children went to school. That was the first family in Acholi that opened our eyes. And as a result, we have, we have great people who came from that family. Dr. Martin Alike is one of them. His brothers, like Professor Buonamoy, a veterinary professor, and many others all achieved very high accolades and they were the pride of our community. I enjoyed cordial relationship with Martin Alike. He actually, <coughs> in 2011, when I won elections, I, he threw for me a party here where we are now praying, right here. He called his friends I also called my friends and we had a celebration here. And he continued guiding me. The last time we were here when he was still in January, when he was able to meet visitors, we were here with my friend, Mr. Okero Chero, who is a golfer. His wife always complains that golf is he's now golf has taken over from her. He's, he sits somewhere there. And um, <coughs> we came with our wives and we we had a beautiful day together here up to evening. Listening to traditional songs, having have discussions and so on. His loss 
or for that matter, even if God has taken him, for us as a community, we feel it's a loss. That, we are not, that is God's ways. God's ways are different from our ways. God can choose when to take one. But we are grateful to God that he allowed Martin Alike to be amidst us and helped us, most of us, many of us, and showed us the way how things could, should go. We really are grateful to God for Martin. And on behalf of our leadership, the leadership from our area there, some of whom might be here, I want to really thank God and thank God for the family of Alike. Thank God for the family of Lashito Cage for having shown the way for us, for our parents and others to start valuing education. And thank you very much listening to me for this brief statement. There would be a lot more I can say, but you see, this is a brief moment. Many others will want to say something. I also got a message from Rod, the Paramount Chief of Bacholi, Rod David Onena Chana, which I would like to read verbatim. The chief mourner, the main celebrant, members of the clergy, distinguished mourners, ladies and gentlemen. Celebrating the life of Dr. Martin Jerome Alike. K. Quaro actually and its people received with great sorrow the sad news about the demise of Dr. Martin Jerome Alike on 14th April 2024. The late Dr. Alike was recognized as the chief in bracket road of Temajo sub clan of the greater coach clan of Acholi. He was a great friend to all the chiefs and many people. He ende endeavored to support and participate and encourage the revival of the Acholi cultural institution. His demise is a blow to the cultural institution at the time that we are struggling to rebuild rehabilitate homesteads in Acholi after the devastating two decades of war in northern Uganda. We shall profoundly remember Dr. Alike as a pioneer champion of higher education in Acholi. Uganda and East Africa, particularly being the first dental surgeon in the region, the entire Choli cherished the <coughs> resilience of Dr. Alike and many of his brothers and sisters who raised the bar much higher in higher education. That was emulated by all, actually. The family of Lajero Kech, his father, was well known for the first um, few university degrees and diplomas much earlier in the 1950s and 1960s. There was even a joke in actually that even chicken in, at, in that family, he spoke English. <laughs> Just to emphasize how educated people in the family in the family who are. <laughs> Let me take this opportunity to thank His Excellency the President for granting and according Dr. Jerome Alike, Martin Jerome Alike, an official ceremony, cere uh, celebration of his uh, life and burial. I also want to thank the widow, Mrs. Camille Alike, 
for loving, caring, looking after him in the hospital until the end. You have been a model family that people envied and respected. I encourage the children to carry on with the good legacy of their father. The people of Acholi uh, look at you as, as a pillar for development. I thank all of you for coming in large numbers to pray for Dr. Alike and the bereaved family. May God the Almighty bless you all. I truly welcome you at the burial of Etawaranga village in Gulu. You are his, uh, his Royal Highness David Rod, Rod David Onen Achana II, Lawiruri of Acholi. That means the, the Paramount Chief. Mm. So thank you very much for listening to me and also listening to our word, the message, yes. I want to take this opportunity, maybe invite my colleague, Honorable uh, General Katumbo Wamala, to also say a few words. Thank you. Afar, yeah. The clergy, Mama Navagirika, Umlangirawa Sajja, Navana Bengoma Valuano, the family, Mama Kamira, and the children. I will not to say the fellow mourners, I will say fellow celebrants, because I think we are here to celebrate a life of a giant in administration, in management, and the life were lived. The life of the late Martin Alike. I'm not actually, I don't have an official message from government, but I can say without uh, doubt that uh, while we were in cabinet, that's when we were informed of the passing of uh, Martin Alike, and the president was highly, highly moved and he ordered that he should be buried with an official burial, but respecting the family's uh, terms. So the official burial which you are going to see of the late Martin Alec may not be the other official burials you have seen, but will be an official burial. So I bring you, Ma Mama Kamira and family, and Mona's condolences from cabinet. But I know government will send an official mourner on the barrio. I want to thank God for the life of uh, a man of integrity, a man of dignity, a man with all who has lived his life and lived it well. For me, I think it's like when a giant movule tree falls in a forest. This is a giant tree which has been felled. But at least he has done what he has done and done it well. The question is, those of us who are still behind, what kind of life are we going to live and live behind? I came to know the first time I met the late I was in police, I think it was about 2003, 2002. I'd gone to police as a military man. And everybody had said, what is this military man going to do in the police, for God's sake? The newspapers wrote all kinds of stories, headlines, about how the, the president had made a very big mistake to take a military man in the police. But two years down the road, Bell gave me an Achievers Award and it was handed to me by Dr. Alike. That's the time I accosted him and he told me don't be moved by the press reports. Do your work and those of us who can see 
what you are doing, we'll appreciate what you are doing. It gave me a lot of encouragement. And by the time I left police, people didn't want me to leave police. <laughs> <laughs> so um, uh, from then on, I admired him. I admired the family. You would, wherever you would see, except on golf and the golf course, of course, <laughs> but Mama Camilla and the, the late were, have been a very, very good couple to emulate as husband and wife. <laughs> and Mama, thank you very much. Thank you for being close to him. Thank you for... Because many times wives have a big contribution in what kind of character we are. Because <laughs> sometimes if you leave home and the home is not stable and you go to work, I don't think you would have been able to head all those boards and head them well if you are not giving him comfort at home. So thank you very much for being the wife you have been. We celebrate his life and I think it's a life which we, many of us need to... We may not be able to be what he is because God does, has never made a photocopy. He has made everybody an original. He made him in his original way. But we can emulate the good things he has done. Integrity. That is something which is, as a country, we are searching today. If you look at the, what is happening everywhere, questions are being asked. Where, is the, where has integrity gone in this country? Now, when we lose people like this one, we ask ourselves, who are we, who are going to step in the shoes to exude integrity in this country? We want to come to thank him. He contributed to the peace we have today. And his contribution were big, but he never talked about them. And I will not talk about them. But he made his contribution. The late is a person who has been, uh, even, even in, in, in stature, before he, he got that uh, stoop, he would stand and you see really a man of, <laughs> of size. But he never, you never heard him say, do you know who I am? There are some people who are smaller than myself even. And they reach a place and they ask, do you know who I am? But not the likes of Martin. The kind of life he lived is a life which is worth emulating. I want to send my condolences and of course condolences of the government to the family, to the, to the church, to the golfers. <laughs> I think the golfers will miss him the most. This is a very big loss to the golfing, golfing world. But again, let's celebrate what he has been able to do. And let's learn the lessons from the way he has lived his life. Uh, but with those, I think tomorrow, and the official uh, barrio, government will send an official mourner. I would like to me also take this opportunity to thank him in, in, in passing for the image he gave out there as a role model to many of us and to some of us. May God rest Alike's uh, soul in peace. Thank you. You have walked a good journey. Thank you so much, uh, General Katumba, for your speech this evening. We appreciate your presence. You've come, you came here on, on Tuesday. Today you are with us. That shows how close and how much you value uh, the letter Lique and the family. We will hear it's an evening of celebration. It's an evening to be encouraged to walk the journey that is meaningful. There is no doubt about the journey of Dr. Lique. It is consistent, it is encouraging, and it is something we all aspire to live. So this evening, we have so many people, captains of industries, chairmen of board, who are going to just very briefly share what they know about Dr. Martin and how he has impacted us. So it is not 
an evening, like somebody said, it's an evening to celebrate. But above all, it's also an evening for us to learn. To learn what we can do, that Martin did, what we can go on with to make our country better. So stay with us. We will hand over to the church briefly to close out this part. But the family has as well prepared a meal for each one of us. So please don't leave without having dinner this evening. But we will, after the church has closed this part, continue with part two. And my brother, Sir David Panga, will do recognitions and welcome the special friends of the family as well. So Provost, let me hand over to you to close us out this part. Thank you so much. Having heard all those testimonies, it's just good for us to stand and say, it is well with my soul. Let's pray and then we'll sing that hymn and celebrate the life of Dr. Martin. Father, in the name of Jesus, what a life, a life well lived, a life of integrity. And we come here to celebrate such a wonderful life. Such a selfless life, Lord. Such a life, for oh God, that has impacted many. Such a life that has touched many. Lord, we give you thanks for Dr. Martin. And we thank you that, Lord, he has left behind a family. A family that has equally lived a life of integrity. Lord, cause us to emulate what we hear. And above all, Lord, to understand the source of Martin's life. And the source was God. And so, Father, help us to embrace you in our hearts, in our lives, that out of embracing you, the fruit of our lives will be visible to the entire world. Father, help us to love ourselves, to love our families, to love our country. Mama Camilla sharing 65 years in marriage. Lord, it's a great example for us in this world. We give you thanks, Lord. There is so much that has been shared that we cannot re-echo each and everything. And there is much that is yet to be shared. But now, Lord, we pray that you bless us tonight. Even as we share in the moment, so Lord, in jubilation and celebration and gratitude and grief, all this mixed up, Lord, we worship you. And even as we share in the eats, the drinks, the meals, God, we pray that we continue to celebrate your love. And so, friends, may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep our hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessings of God Almighty, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit be upon each one of us. And may this blessing keep us now and forevermore. Amen. The choir is going to lead us. We'll sing that hymn together. It is well with my soul. My soul.
that like Martin, uh, my relationship with church um, intensified when I was at King's College, Budo. We went, we went to church every morning, chapel every morning, except Saturday mornings, and then, of course, on Sunday, you had the full service. Um, as soon as I left, I stopped. Because <laughs> I, I, fi I, figured, I figured that I'd prayed for most of my life, but I'm going to start again. Um, the tank is running low. Um, I'd like first of all to recognize the presence of Mama Nabe Gereka and to recognize the presence of Omlangira David Chintua Sajja, Dr. Martin Aleka, uh, like his brother uh, Daudio Cheng. We're a living bridge between many communities, living bridge between Buganda and Acholi and certainly the Brotherhood, uh, as uh, Auntie Camille told us. Uh, I think neither of you are here, so I'll repeat the story because it was a touching one. Um, she learned timekeeping because they were invited to Bam Nanika for dinner. Um, those who don't know, how Bam Nanika is an hour and a half away from here. Um, and uh, she wasn't ready on time. So Dr. Martin left her behind and went for dinner with uh, Sava Sajja, then Sekava Kamtesa. Uh, when he got there, um, he was asked where his wife was. Uh, and upon him responding that she wasn't ready and I left, uh, Sekawaka sent a car from Bam Nanika to Kololo to pick the new bride to attend dinner. Um, the relationship is very close and we are forever grateful and honored by your presence. Thank you very much. Um, I'd also like everybody to just raise their hand and wave to their neighbor. Um, if we could just do that, just wave to your neighbor. 
So we're all big and we've all been recognized. <laughs> so that we've done protocol. Thank you very much. Um, we're going to be very brief because um, of a certain weather uh, threat that is uh, looming. But those of you who've been following the news will have noted that uh, Dubai suffered uh, very heavy rainfall. I think they received on Monday uh, a whole year's worth plus more of rainfall in one day. Uh, there was massive flooding. Um, scientists have attributed that to uh, global warming. But I'm reliably informed that in fact those were tears from heaven because that's the day that Dr. Martin Aleka left us. But they weren't tears of sadness, they were actually tears of laughter because he just started telling them the stories that he's been telling us all our lives. And those, those, those are the tears of laughter from angels. Um, he's been telling them stories. He's now gotten to the part about the Kenyan students in Makere who used to share one pair of trousers for the dances. Um, and there'll be lots of other stories that he will tell. But um, he, those stories inspired, there were always lessons um, which inspired people um, to do the right thing in the right way, to live good lives, and generally to be empathetic, understand uh, each other. And in all those things, Dr. Alika left a huge legacy in all walks of life, in dentistry. Um, he even gave us, I was going to say his only son, but he gave us a son <laughs> for dentistry. <laughs> uh, but he also left a huge legacy in the corporate world. So um, this evening, and it's not going to be very long, I promise, uh, a couple of people from the corporate world have wanted to come and testify about their lives in the corporate world and how Dr. Alika uh, impacted them. Um, I'm not going to take them in any particular order, but I think it might be in order of uh, first for me to ask the chairman who has now taken over. Dr. Alika was known as the chairman of chairmen because he was the chair of all boards and generally counseled so many board chairs, etc. So the first uh, person that I'm going to ask to speak might now be the chairman of chairmen, uh, seeing as a Dr. Martin has left that seat. Uh, and he's also the chairman of the organizing committee. That's Mr. Charles Mbire, uh, to come along, uh, give us a, a quick word, and then we'll have a couple of other uh, captains of industry. Mr. Mbire, please step forward. Thank you very much. Firstly, as chairman of the committee that has been um, handling this, I want to welcome you and thank you for coming. On my part, Martin Alike was a personal friend. He was a business partner in two companies. And he's a man I loved. So Frank keeps time that I used to tease him that he's a tallest Muchiga <laughs> who got lost in Gulu. I'm a Muchiga, and you know, those who have, who have dealt with the Bachiga know that we speak our minds sometimes. We really speak bluntly our minds. Sum up Martin. I'll use a quote from Shakespeare. He once said, all the elements, the good elements, were so well mixed up in him that he qualifies to be called a good man. The Chinese have a saying, you don't measure a man standing up. You measure a man when he's lying down. I've been chairman of this committee, 
and every call I made, whoever I talked to would pause and they say, yes, that was a great man. On one part, on, one, on my part, there's one thing that I'll always treasure. We are, we, are, we are ages apart from Martin. You wonder how it become his partner, his friend. But he taught me a lot of Ugandan history. None of you knows how much he knew. That man knew every detail and it was the truth. He knew every detail and I will ever be grateful to him. The other thing is, of course, I don't know whether I'm qualified to say this here, and I won't say it in front of everybody. The times I had with him to come home, have a meal, he's a type of man you don't want him to stop talking. But there's one thing I want to assure, I don't know if this is the right time to say it, he loved and respected his wife. It's a time for joking, but anything concerning his wife, it was serious. On time, getting back home, is she okay? I wish we had met him earlier, some of us, <laughs> to teach us some of those traits. Now, they say in life, only those that are forgotten are the real dead ones. One thing I want to promise to keep Martin alive is my friend. I will never forget you. So as long as I'm alive, you'll be alive. I think that's the best gift I can give him. There's nothing else you can do. <laughs> so I also want to thank very much people have helped us Members of the committee, I've never seen dedicated people sitting down, working so hard, with a passion, real passion. And uh, Mama, we are doing it because we love you, we love Martin, we love the family. I mean, I remember the days we've been sitting here, having meals and so on. I mean. He always had that joke. You know, you, you'd be with him. He'd keep, I think he had them in the pocket or somewhere. He would just crack something. And uh, his jokes were English jokes, not American jokes. You know, American jokes you don't think, think much, but English jokes. You remember after, you, you, you interpret it first and then you blast out and, you know, you laugh. That was, well, that was a Martin. But he was. A great man. He was a great man. We'll miss him. We'll give him a befitting send off. And Camilla, we're there for you. This is our home. We'll keep coming. We're with you. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Ambir. Um, ladies and gentlemen, just before we get the next speaker, I've been asked by the church uh, to point out that those hymn books that you have, the beautiful praise and worship books, um, you might not be able to read it very clearly, say not to be taken. Um, they're not to be taken, they're actually to be collected. Uh, there's a gentleman who's going to swing by, collect them and take them. Thank you very much. Um, can I now take the opportunity to invite uh, Mr. Jim, Jimmy Mugirwa, um, who will speak on behalf of uh, UBL, Uganda Breweries Limited, East Africa Breweries. As he steps up, I heard that Dr. Martin was on the board of UBL for 42 years. Um, that must be some kind of record, uh, because these days you can't, if you go beyond nine years, you're deemed to cease to be independent. But um, let's hear from Mr. Mugirwa on behalf of UBL. Thank you. 
the Camilla, Camel, the family, the government ministers who are here, Mama Nawa Gedeka, Mulangida, past ministers and everybody in your respective capacities. I think it's a great day to be here. I stand here in two, probably wearing two hats. One as the chairman of Uganda Breweries, and the second one on a personal level. My name's uh, Jimmy Mgera, as I've been introduced, and I have a number of other old chairs of UBL who are here, and I'll introduce them at the right time. But we have a message as Uganda Breweries, because Martin served the board of Uganda Breweries from 1962 to 2006. So those are a total of 43 years. He's the longest board member we've ever had as the breweries. And we attribute a lot of our success as Uganda breweries to what Martin did. When Martin left, he handed over to Dr. William Kalema, who is here. William Kalema then handed over to Alan Shinobi. Alan Shinobi handed over to Japheth, and Japheth handed over to me. But the key thing is that all of us, when we sit in that boardroom and we, you see Martin's picture, you s recognize that we are who we are because of that gentleman, Martin. I don't want to repeat all the great virtues of leadership that have been said by various speakers who stood here. But let me say this, that we've come to the end of an era. And that era probably had Martin Alike, had the last James Morana. And then there's a new breed of board chairmen who have come in. But what Martin has left is legacy. And on a personal level, on a personal level, when Martin got to know that I'd been appointed to head Talo Oil, and as soon as I flew in, Martin asked me for a game of golf. We spent the round of golf, not really playing golf, because he could joke a lot on the golf course and you lost your swing, as my fellow golfers would know. But Martin did tell me something, that Jimmy, you have come here to take the most difficult industry in the country. I've been in the oil industry as chairman of Heritage since 2004. And you have just come. That was about 14, 12 years ago. And he told me, I'm not sure in your time we will see first oil because there is a lot of politics. Martin is not here, but I think we'll get oil one day. I should say that. But ladies and gentlemen, I want to say thank you very much, Camille, for hosting us in a number of times. We're so grateful for the mentorship that Martin gave us. Uh, I and many of the other friends who are here from the corporate world, I see Marco Chitti here. I see a number of gophers who have benefited a lot from Martin. And we pray that the Lord gives you the, trans the strength you already demonstrated strength today, but we thank you for sharing him with us. May Lord, may the good Lord keep Martin's soul in peace. Thank you very much. Um, you'll be glad to hear that we're coming swiftly to the end. Um, I'd like now to invite a gentleman who shares many traits uh, with uh, Dr. Martin Alika. Um, he is very tall, um, very closely associated with East African Breweries Limited. Um, he is a Budonian and he's also from Acholi. Uh, Marco Chitiongo to come and testify. Uh, 
perhaps he will be his heir in corporate. <laughs> Thank you, David. Um, good evening, fellow celebrants. And I say that quite intentionally because tonight is a night of celebrating. We're celebrating the life of a great, great man. So my name is Mark Ochiti Yongom. And I knew Dr. Martin Alike. I used to call him Dr. M, in many capacities. But it's in the capacity of a friend and a mentor that I want to share a little testimony. But before I say that, and I wish the clergy you were here to hear this, that song they chose to sing just before they left is a great, great testimony to celebrating life. David said I was in King's College Budo. He was behind me a couple of years. And like he said, we used to go to church every single day. And so we got to know a lot about church. So much so that a lot of us after school, like David, stopped going to church after that. But I remember that song and the story about that song being told to us while we were students. And apparently it was composed by this guy, uh, Auntie Camille, you probably know this better than I do, being a, a hard church goer. That it was composed by a person who had lost everything in his life. He lost his wealth, he lost his family, and the only thing that he hadn't lost was his life. But still in the midst of all that, he found the strength to say, it is well with my soul. And that is why I say, this is about celebration. Now, I started my corporate life a number of years ago um, in a company called Shell. I actually worked with Jimmy. Uh, Jimmy was my boss back in the day. And somewhere around the year 2000, I was uh, what they called a senior sales rep, whatever that meant. A senior sales rep for the company. And uh, one day, one evening, I was at the golf club, because I do play golf. I like to play the game of golf. And I met uh, Dr. M, as I fondly called him, coming out of the showers having played a round of golf. And he said, hey, Marco, because he used to call me Marco. He said, hey, Marco, there's something I want to talk to you about. Let's meet upstairs after you come up from having a shower. And so we went upstairs, and he said to me, would you like to join Uganda Breweries? And I said, well, my bosses like Jimmy are not promoting me. And I've been asking them for a promotion for a long time. So if it is a promotion, yes, I would like to join Uganda Brewery. So he said, there's a job, sales manager, that I think you should apply for. I said, really? And he told me about the job. And I said, fine, I'll put in my application. And he said, when you do that, write my name down there as your referee. I've never told Jimmy this story. Obviously, he wouldn't have been happy. <laughs> but I did that. And I sent my application, and I wrote his name down there as my referee. And I sent it out to the brewery. And two weeks later, I met him again at the golf club. And he called me. And he said, unfortunately, you did not get the job because it was only one position. And there were a number of people who were better than you at the job. So you didn't get the job. I'm really sorry. And I said, look, I know Jimmy wasn't a very good boss, but I wasn't running away from him anyway. So <laughs> I'll be OK for now. Now, funny enough, 16 years after that, in the year 2016, I got appointed as the managing director for Uganda Breweries. And, and one of the first people that I met when I came back to take, up, to take up that job from Nairobi was Dr. M at the golf club again. And he called me and said, Congratulations. He said, I wanted to be one of the first people to congratulate you, but I did not have your number. I would have called you. He said, congratulations, and I know you will do well. He said, 
They did not think you were good enough to be a sales manager. But now here you are, and you're going to be the managing director. Now, when he said that to me, I, that, that conversation had happened 16 years before that, and I, I didn't remember. So I didn't really know what he meant by saying, they did not think you were good enough to be a sales manager. And I started to think, maybe one day he, when he was the board chairman, they had discussed me, and they had thought I was not good enough to be, to be sales manager. And I said, oh, is that what you thought about me? It's only when I went back home and I reflected about it, then I remembered the incident 16 years before that. And I called him and I said, Dr. M, when you said to me yesterday that they didn't think I was good enough to be sales manager, and now I'm the managing director, I, now I know what you meant because I had forgotten that incident when I applied for a job. So thank you very much and thanks for believing in me. So that was Dr. M, my mentor, my friend, and Okello, he didn't leave three lines. He left a legacy. He left a big, big legacy. He left very deep shoes that you and Philip and Martin and Julie are going to have to fill. And I'm sure you will. May he rest in peace. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, as the speeches come to an end, um, we'll be, the ushers will be guiding us to dinner um, round the back. Um, we only have a couple of speeches left, which are now going to the uh, social side of things. Um, as a Bodonian, I would say that one of, aside from being the, the son of a rot, uh, Dr. Alika's greatest achievement was going to King's College, Bodo. Um, <laughs> And uh, we had Dr. Edward Kayondo, who was going to speak on behalf of the Old Bodonians, uh, but I think he's left. Um, so I'm going to invite uh, Dr. Alan Shonubi to come and speak on behalf of the Old Bodonians, um, and also as a friend. Um, and as he comes up, uh, there's a story told by the Old Bodonians of uh, Dr. Martin's generation, that when they finished their university, they'd go around the country um, attending the graduation parties, because there were small uh, classes at the time, that attend university graduation parties of each of their university mates, some of whom had been to Bodo, some of whom obviously hadn't. Um, so this particular cohort of graduates um, had done the parties in Buganda, and then they went across to Osoga um, for one of their uh, colleagues' graduation parties. Um, the graduate made a grand speech and there was a small lady um, from the village who was looking at him very closely, perhaps his grandmother, listening to this speech and how he had conquered uh, Makere University, had gotten a degree, and she looked at him very closely. Then after he was done, went up to him and asked him, have you done with Makere? And the man said very bravely, yes. I said, so now that you're finished, at Makere, when do you plan to go? <laughs> so when Dr. Martin, it's a true story, true story. When Dr. Martin, Alan, please come. When Dr. Martin uh, heard that uh, Bishop Sekade uh, speak one time at Namirembe Cathedral and say how disappointed he was when he didn't get a place in King's College Budo and had achieved much by becoming the Bishop of Namirembe Diocese, um, which then made that meant that he was the governor emerita. He was the, what's the word? Ex officio governor, uh, uh, chairman of the board of governors um, of King's College Budo. Um, when Dr. Martin was invited to speak, the first thing he said um, was that he hadn't realized Bishop Sekade had suffered this great disappointment in his life and failed to make it to Budo. Uh, it was a Sunday, and Dr. Alika volunteered that on Monday, first thing tomorrow, I'm going to write a letter to the headmaster to admit you <laughs> in order that you may not miss out on this great achievement. So we now have the president of the Old Bodonians Club, Dr. Shinobi. Thank you, David. Um, but that was slightly wrong. I think I relinquished that post of president several years ago. Um, thank you, uh, David. 
Mama Camille, my brothers and my sister Julie, um, <laughs> Madam um, uh, Prince Wasaja, Mina, Um I've been asked to take on a few words about um, Martin. Martin was a very good friend of mine. And our friendship started many years ago, but really went up from the time I was a patient when uh, he was uh, our dentist when we were children. And many of, many of us met him that way. And those famous words, put up your hand if it hurts. <laughs> so Martin was a very good friend, but that friendship was strengthened in 2006 when we had the 100 years of King's College Buddha and we had the celebrations and he was the chairman and uh, we got on quite well and at that point he told me I went to school with a lot of members of your family the Senka took a family I remember he told me Albert was in Canada house with me and of course that opened up many 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 talks and a couple of years later, um, William Kalima approached me uh, with Martin and asked me if I would uh, be happy to be chairman of Uganda Breweries. And of course, it was something which um, I jumped at. Um, Budonians are known for, for leadership. And um, a lot of people, when I eventually took on the post and I was accepted, asked me, is it because you drink bell? I said, what do you mean? He said, well, that's what you all seem to have in common with Martin, William, and, uh, and yourself. You all uh, drink uh, Uganda Brewers products. And I said, no, that's not all. But probably that post was reserved for Bedonians. <laughs> because Martin was the chairman. And the day he was leaving, he said, if I had known, he, after 42 years, he said, if I had known that this post was so short term, I wouldn't have taken it. <laughs> and that is a quote. <laughs> so, after Martin, uh, William Kalima was chairman for some years, and I was chairman for nine years. After me came uh, Jafet Kato. Was it Jafet Kato? I think, yes, I think it was Jafet Kato. And after Jafet Kato was um, Jimmy Mgera. Now, if you look at all those, all of them were Budonians, except, of course, poor Jimmy Mugira, <laughs> who came from Makaria College School. But to his credit, his father was a Budonian, so <laughs> I, I think he fits in. So that's how initially Martin mentored me. Just like uh, Mark, a lot of us got to know him through that. But we also had a lot of social interactions with him. I think I, I, I one time met him at uh, Sweden Munyantwali's house and we sat and had a drink and I said I cannot leave before Martin. It was a wrong, wrong decision. <laughs> I left at three. <laughs> three in the morning. And of course uh, Martin, you, you had to sit and listen to his jokes. You just he said I'm going to miss one. Of course, his, uh, one of his fa favorite was um, the issue of um, how and when he joined the breweries. But I'll leave that. Those of you who have read his book will have known a lot about that one. But I was humbled when Martin asked me to preside over the launch of his book, um, The Bell is Ringing. That is a fantastic book. I sat on a plane and read it. And when I arrived, I, I asked the pilot, why have we landed so, so soon. He said, no, 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 it's a scheduled time. I could not put that book down. And I'd recommend everyone to read that book. It's an amazing book. It tells the story of a great man and a great mentor. So, Martin not only mentored some of us there, at some point Martin asked me, there is a company called NIC and I'm the chairman. And I've stayed on in NIC because of trying to look after the legacy of my friend who passed away. And um, he asked me, would you like to join that board? And I agreed that I would like. And the 
procedures were put in. And so I succeeded Martin as the chairman of NIC with the same thought that we are going to turn this company around and turn it into what his friend envisaged. His friend came from Nigeria and was chairman for many years. He said, we are going to turn NIC into what it used to be. We had this problem, which many of you read of uh, with Makere, which resolved very amicably. And we went to sign the contract at the main hall in Makere University. And as we were coming down the steps, uh, I told Martin, do you know that hall? He said, yes, I know that hall. That's Makere main hall. He said, yes. I said, I have very many great memories of Makere. We had very many dances. And he said, so do I. I said, so you do? He said, yes. But the most interesting one, which David hinted on, is of the three Kenyans who went into that hall to dance. And in those days, um, he, he stresses this, Kenyan was not, Kenya was not doing as well as Uganda. So these Kenyans went, they went to the dance, but they had only one pair of trousers among them. So one would go and dance, come back, they change, this one, second one goes, they change, the third one goes. So they got a bit upset when the third one didn't come back <laughs> in time. But to make things worse, the third one was extremely tall. And so the trousers went up to his ankles and uh, <laughs> you couldn't tell whether they were long shorts or short trousers. So that was the, that was the life that was the humor, that was the friendship which our great mentor, Martin Alika, had. We shall miss him. Thank you very much, Dr. Shinobi. I sincerely apologize. Um, amongst the captains of industry, I omitted Stan Bick, the Standard Bank family. I understand that there is a representative or the chair of the board might be here. So could I respectfully ask that they come up and beg your audience, Mr. Daman Chitevire, to come have a quick word, I apologize, and then we'll have the, golf, uh, the captain of the golf club and then dinner. Uh, I thought I was left out because I'm not a Budonian. to the family of the late Dr. Martin Alike. It is with deep sadness that we, we learned of the untimely passing of Dr. Martin Alike. On behalf of the board of directors of Stanbic Uganda franchise, please accept our deepest condolences. Dr. Alike served as board chairman of Sandbik Bank Uganda Limited from 2002 to 2008. He was followed by uh, Huntington Karhanga, who was followed by uh, Japheth Kato, who was followed by uh, Professor Mangeni, and then I came in. During his tenure, he oversaw two significant milestones in the bank's history. The first was the acquisition of the majority shareholding in the Uganda Commercial Bank by Standard Bank Group, which resulted in the creation of Uganda's largest commercial bank by assets and branch network. And the second was the listing of the bank shares on the Uganda Security Exchange in the year 2007. Dr. Lique's diplomacy networks, approachability, and impeccable sense of humor, as you've heard, proved invaluable on both occasions. In June of last year, the Board of Directors had the honor to host Dr. Like as one of the special guests at a farewell dinner for the immediate past board chairpersons and, um, and outgoing directors. Despite his health condition, he attended the event, demonstrating his unwavering passion 
and commitment to the Sandvik board. Thank you. We thank Dr. Alike and his family for his distinguished service and invaluable contribution to our purpose of driving Uganda's growth and, the ad and additionally thank God for all the key milestones that he accomplished and all the lives he has impacted in his life. Our thoughts and prayers are with you during this very difficult time as we honor and celebrate a life well lived and a legacy that will continue to inspire us. Rest in peace, Dr. Alike. <laughs> As Tanbik Bank, we were so touched by the decision by the family to support the children of Acholi. And we will be contributing 10 million shillings to this cause <laughs> so that we can pro reproduce many more of Martin Alike. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you very much, you. Mr. Shitabide. I now invite the captain of the Uganda Golf Club to please come. Hello, celebrants. To Mama, Philip, Okello, the family, thank you for being strong. We gather here tonight with heavy hearts, united in celebrating the life of a true titan of the corporate world. A lion of a man, a super golfer, as a distinguished member of Uganda Golf Club, a father, our quarter, Dr. Martin Aleke. Dr. Aleke wasn't just a member, he was an icon, a life member of Uganda Golf Club a former member of the Board of Trustees, and most importantly, a cherished friend and gentleman. His passion for the game was infectious, whether it was his strategic mind, his competitive spirit, his elegant swing, or his genuine joy in sharing a good round with his friends. Dr. Ali K embodied the true spirit of golf. Beyond the course, Dr. Alike's dedication to the club was unwavering. As a member of the Board of Trustees, his wise counsel, his financial acumen, his innovative ideas left an indelible mark on our dear club. He sponsored dozens of tournaments every year. I hope those that are in his shoes will be able to do the same. I'd like to assure the family that we have called off our tournaments for now, the ones that we had over the weekend in memory of Dr. Aleke and At an appropriate time, we're going to organize for a memorial tournament for doctor. And I'd like to assure you that the golfers are in a very sad and somber mood. Nonetheless, they do celebrate the life of doctor. We think he lived a very full life. Beyond the course, Beyond the course, his leadership helped shape the very foundation upon which the club thrives. Dr. Alike's legacy extends far beyond these accomplishments. He was a man of warmth, love, humor, and generosity. 
His presence on the course in the clubhouse was a beacon of camaraderie, sportsmanship, and encouragement. He had a knack for making everyone feel welcome, a true friend to all who crossed his path at the club. Yesterday we eulogized him at the club and so many stories were told about Dr. We had our caddies tell stories. We had our locker room attendants tell stories about him. We had his friends. Actually, if I can ask all golfers to please stand up for recognition. I see Mark, I see Mr. Nick, I see my fellow captain. Thank you all for coming. Mr. Sudhir, I see you're not standing up, but uh, you're being represented. Thank you, please sit down. Thank you. Tonight, as we share these stories and memories, let us celebrate Dr. Alike's life. Let us remember his humor, his unwavering sportsmanship, the twinkle in his eye as he sank the final perfect part. Dr. Alike, like the poem, If by Reared Kipling, embodied the spirit of someone who could keep your head when all about you are losing theirs and blaming it on you. If you can trust when all men doubt you, but make allowance for their doubting too. If you can dream and not let your dreams be your master, he showcased his ability to balance ambition with practicality. And I'm sure for all those that served on these boats, you must have seen that. Ladies and gentlemen, in his absence, we shall, we shall deeply, we shall deeply miss him. But his legacy, his passion for the game, his dedication for the club, his warmth of his spirit, will forever be etched in the history of Uganda Golf Club and I'm sure Uganda at large. Dr. Leke, you are a true gentleman, a champion golfer, a friend beyond compare, a chairman of chairmen. May your memory and legacy forever inspire us. The bell will forever keep ringing in our hearts. Rest in peace, Quara. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, he also made a confession that he's a smackist. He went to St. Mary's. But we're all allowed one small challenge in our life. You'll be very glad to hear, ladies and gentlemen, that dinner is now served. Um, and uh, I think we had prayed for the dinner. But if we hadn't, um, uh, everyone, permit me to lead everyone in the Budonians' meal prayer, which is very short. It was always short because we were always very hungry uh, at mealtime. And it went thus, if we may humble ourselves now to pray. For what we're about to receive, may the Lord make us truly thankful. Amen. So that's it. Um, ushers will be guiding us uh, to the serving stations, which are, I hope, are ready, Mr. Nyako. Yes, uh, so ushers will be guiding us. Do take the time to come along, say hello um, to the family. Uh, the DJ can give us some music now. Thank you very much. <laughs>